Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. Today's tutorial, we will be creating these three unique illusion shadows. And by illusion, all I'm talking about is it's giving the impression that the photographs here are not lying completely flat. So we're gonna we're gonna create each one one by one. We're also going to be creating the photo frame around it and applying this background texture. So with that said, let's get started. I've got uh, just a basic artboard right here and I'm going to apply that pattern that you saw, the paper pattern. And I'll leave a link of where you can pick this uh, specific pattern up. So I'm just going to go to Pattern Overlay and I'm going to choose, let's see, I think it's this one, yep. So this is the Earth pattern and I'm going to scale it down to 50% and hit OK. And now to, I'm just going to label this my background. So now we're going to create a photo frame. So I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool right here. I'm going to make sure it's white. I'm going to hold shift so it stays a square. And I'm just going to drag it to a size that I feel good about. And after doing that, I'm going to duplicate this rectangle. Um, so I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and just drag it up. And that makes it a copy. And now I'm going to go Command T or Control T on a PC. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit so it's about the same on each side to get that Polaroid type of feel. Hit enter when I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to lay in a photograph and I'm just going to um, I'm gonna go file place and use a photo of my dog Nuna. Um, so this is Nuna. Scale her down. Okay, and now you can see the photograph is right above the second rectangle that we made and if I right click on the layer and click create clipping mask she'll be enclosed within that second rectangle and to make it a little more obvious that this is a Polaroid I'm just gonna apply an inner shadow so I'm gonna double click on that second rectangle and go to my inner shadow and that's way too big so first of all I'm gonna take the opacity down to 25 percent and then I'm gonna make the the distance one and the size 5 and hit OK. And now it's just got that subtle shadow in there. So now that I've got this Polaroid the way that I want it, I'm going to group the two rectangles together as well as the photo. So I'm going to have them all selected. All I did was select the first one, hold shift on my keyboard, and then click this bottom one. And then I'm going to go Command G or Control G on a PC and that groups them. So this is my photo number one. So underneath it, I'm going to create a new layer and this is going to be my shadow layer. So you'll see right here I've got black as my background color. Whenever you have uh, a color right here, this is your background, this is your foreground. So I want to make sure I've got black as my background right now and I'm just going to hit M on my keyboard to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to drag, uh, keeping within the, the inner rectangle, about a shape like this so it only extends a little bit further below the photograph and once that's selected, I'm going to go Command Delete on my Mac, or you can do Control Backspace on a PC, and that just colors it, that selected area. So I'm going to go Command D to deselect that, and now I'm going to hit Command T and right click Warp. And for this first one, we want it to like bow out a little bit, so I'm just going to click and drag until I get a nice little bow right there and then I can just click off and apply this. So now I'm going to bump this up and then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I've got this, you can kind of play around with um, how blurry you want it to be. A blur of five right now kind of looks good to me so I'm going to stick with that and I'm actually going to bump this up just a little bit more so it's a little more subtle but still gives the same effect. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity to 60%. And now if I zoom out, you can see it's usually easier to tell how effective um, your shadow is working. Okay, so I'm just going to bump it up a little bit more, and that looks good. Okay, so that's the first shadow done. Now we're going to go to the next one. So I'm just going to select both the shadow. I'm going to call this shadow one. 
I'm going to select the shadow and the photo. Well, I'm just going to select the photo because we don't need the shadow again. So I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and then drag. And if I hold Shift while I'm dragging, it'll drag it in a straight line like that. So this is my next one. Okay, so I'm going to create a layer right below it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to grab my marquee tool. I'm going to drag a rectangle. And then I'm going to go Command Delete or Control Backspace to fill it. Command D to deselect. Command T to transform and then right click and warp. All right, now instead of pulling it out, I'm going to push it in right about there. I'm going to hit enter to apply the transformation. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to stick with this five um, pixel radius. Hit OK. I'm going to reduce this down to 60% for the opacity. And now I'm just going to bump it up. And now it kind of looks like uh, my edges are, are floating up a little bit. So maybe there's a little bit of a bend in the middle. And I actually, if, um, if it looks like it's a little too curved, you can still transform it. So I'm going to go Command T. I'm just going to squish it down a little bit so it's not quite so severe with the curve. Knock it back up. And then we'll zoom out just to make sure it's, it's working. And it is. OK. So on to our third one. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to label my layers, Shadow 2. OK, now I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and just drag. Actually, I'm just going to drag here. And then I'm holding Shift to make it straight. OK, so I'm going to move all of this over a little bit to give me a little more room for this last one. I'm going to call this 3 and create a layer for my shadow. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. These first two, we kind of kept it right at the bottom of the photograph, but this one we're going to come off of the side and the bottom. So my rectangle is going to be quite a bit larger. I'm going to come almost all the way to the top here, and I'm going to drag it still below the photograph. Okay, and then I'm going to hit Command Delete or Control Backspace on a PC, Command D to deselect, Command T to transform, and then right click and warp. All right, so we want a little bit to show on the edges, and then we want this to still arc again like we did on the, the last one. So you kind of have to fuss around with it a little bit until you get it where, where you feel like it's working. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of freehand this. And I want to make sure up at the very top that I'm not seeing any edges, so it kind of seems like it fades as you get to the top. So just, it's kind of like it's tacked up here, and it's kind of flat in the middle, but the edges are rolling up. That's the impression we want this to have. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, then I'm going to hit Enter. Same thing that we did before, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Hit OK for 5, and then reduce the opacity to 60. I'm going to zoom out. And you can even um, tinker a little bit if you want. I don't think I need to tinker too much with this one. I think it worked pretty well. All right. So those are three unique illusion shadows. And if you want to get a little fancier, you could even, um, I'm going to grab this first one, I'm just going to hold Alt and drag it down as a copy. Um, you could even grab your shadow, and I'm just going to Command T, rotate it, and you could even put it on the sides for an additional effect that's really easy. So I'm just going to copy this, flip it horizontally, drag it back in here. So that can be another really easy, cool way to add another um, illusion to your photograph. And I'm actually, I'm going to do it to the same thing with the second one. Uh, this particular illusion lends itself to a lot of um, other sides. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Flip it horizontally. Oops. 
So this is a really cool way to just add a little extra touch to any photograph on a website or a print application, whatever it is, uh, it's a nice little detail. So that's the end of our tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this kind of tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial almost every week, so thanks again.